So I prayed to the universe, just let me be famous. I didn't understand what all came with that. Mm -hmm. As a little girl, right. you just see the lights, the glamour, the glitz, and you fall in love with that. So that little girl fell in love with the lights, the glamour, and the, gl the glitz. That little girl fell in love with a woman named Oprah Winfrey oh. on a local talk show in Baltimore mm -hmm. called People Are Talking. And when I looked at that woman, Shannon, I saw me. I saw a big woman with a big head, big shoulders, and big feet. And I said, if that woman can do that, so can I. If you think Monique is going to shuffle her words this time or ever, think again. And then you get that first big check. Yes. And you think the people that gave it to you was awesome mm -hmm. because they gave it to you. And it's more money than you've ever seen before until you find out this ain't the right money. This ain't the right amount. Wait a minute. If they got this, why am I getting this? Then you start putting the pieces together and you start saying it's not right and I'm going to speak about it. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? You see, Winfrey might be the enthusiastic philanthropist that she is. But when it comes to mending relationships, Monique believes Oprah's not the one to learn. And let me be clear, I love that sister, because she's our sister. Mm -hmm. She just got to come back across the street. We got the light on. When I speak about Oprah Winfrey, I speak about that woman because she's spoken about me. And when you begin to speak about me privately, I'm gonna speak about you publicly. You've been unfair. In her recent appearance on the Club Shay Shay podcast, Monique is telling it like it is. What's different? Well, this time she's bringing audio and witnesses with her. Take a look. Last month, Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp got into an intense debate on his show Club Shay Shay. And now, Monique, the famous actress and comedian who won an Oscar, has started another fire with her latest comments on the very same podcast. So when you see a woman say, me turning 70, I'm so happy because I've never hurt anyone. Stop it. Stop it. Because there's a black woman that has been calling your name for over a decade that you seem to want to make go away. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you want, would you sit, if Oprah called Mo today, would you sit down and have a conversation with her? Let me tell you what I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is, bra I'm gonna say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds, Within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. What you trying to tell me about this sister? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. See, when I speak about Oprah Winfrey. In the most recent episode of the podcast, Monique and Sharp had an honest conversation about her childhood, the big problems in Hollywood, and the betrayals she has received from people in the business. And to say the least, it is all quite juicy. During the discussion, Monique didn't hold back when she talked about her current and past anger against certain individuals, naming people like Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart, D.L. Hewley, Will Packer, Tyler Perry, and even the president of Lionsgate. Yep. These are our heroes. How could you say their names out loud? Because they're the ones that did it. And if I don't say it out loud, now you see a woman that is swallowing that pain, that is so stressed out, then you see our sister Taraji B. Henson sit on that platform. And I love that baby because she's a beautiful spirit. But to see her that broken, what our community was saying was we have a hard time, some of us, we have a hard time seeing a strong black woman with a back straight and a chin up and a strong black man standing by her side. We have a hard time accepting that. The 56-year-old actress was completely honest when she criticized Haddish for talking about her husband in public, Perry for spreading false rumors about her, 
Packer for using rude language on set to show who was boss, Oprah Winfrey for not respecting her family, Hart for breaking her promises, and Hughley for letting inappropriate questions about her husband be asked. But because Monique seemed to holler the most against Winfrey, let's first start there. You've been unfair. You've been unjust. And you watched a black woman be thrown under the bus and you said nothing. And here's what's interesting as well. My husband was saying to me, after I won the Oscar award, right? Mm -hmm. And she had the people come, you know, to talk to the Oscar winners. And I go on the stage and I talk to the Oscar winners. Well, when we go to a commercial, the people in the audience, and I say this humbly as my husband was telling me, he said, mama, they wasn't screaming Oprah. They were screaming Monique. Mm -hmm. Right? right? So much so, I had to say, y'all gonna shut that shit up now. We get ready to go back on the air. We right. having fun, right. right? He said, but I watched Oprah. He said, and I watched her almost turning her seat like they screaming her name. Now, some people would say, oh, Monique, you're, you're reaching. Well, let me tell you what then happens. The movie, The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Lee Daniels came out and said, I did offer Monique the butler. But as he said to me, he said, Mo, at the time I didn't have no power and I didn't have no money. So when Oprah said she wanted it, so who played the lead role in the butler? Oprah Winfrey. Lee Daniels was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor and he offered me the grandmother. Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. So, as you're looking at me, it's the same way I'm looking at that sister. And I'm saying, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Because the way things could look, it may not be that way, but just the way things look, Oprah. Just the way you would have my family on your show, Oprah. You see, Monique didn't hold back when she talked about Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. She said that the powerful movie and TV moguls were involved in her claimed exclusion from Hollywood. The comedian also confirmed a very upsetting story about Winfrey. She talked about a phone call she had with Winfrey, who told her that only her brother would be talking about the molestation of Monique as a child on Winfrey's talk show. When Oprah Winfrey had my family, and 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 I'll I'll tell y'all, and I'm looking I'm looking around, baby, because there are people here. Yes. Okay, and I don't yeah. want to be rude to the people at Shay Shay's club. You got other people in the club, mm -hmm. right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up. And she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar Award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. And he wants to tell other people how to look out for a predator. Right. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like she didn't have to call me. She didn't. She didn't have to call me and say, I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father and my other brother who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, right. right? We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about them? Mm -hmm. Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show and they're talking about somebody that violated you. And that woman didn't tell you that they were gonna be there. How would you feel? I would feel like you feel like you felt betrayed. That is exactly how I felt and how I feel. And it's not, oh, I'm in a no, I understand it. But you betrayed me, sister. And I'm not the only one. Because it Yet. Monique was shocked and upset when the episode aired, given her mother was also on the same show without her permission or knowledge. And, as was natural, Monique vented her anger, saying that she would have stopped Winfrey from including her mother if she'd been honest about it. This woman has overstepped with me so in so many ways that somebody would say, 
If we wasn't Monique and Oprah Winfrey in the entertainment business, and we was Monique and Oprah Winfrey that worked at Costco, <laughs> I see you in the break room. <laughs> I see you at your cash register. Because she's overstepped. Wow. So, I don't know, Monique, if this might be the, the term crossing of the Rubicon. We might be going too far. Can I don't, how do you, if you feel that way, because clearly if you feel this way, now yes. I, I get why you feel this way. I don't know, like I said, I don't know this. I don't, I, I'm taking you at your word. Now, not, 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 not the Tyler because yes. I, I've listened to the audio. Yes. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about Oprah. Yes. I'm just taking you at your word. Yes. If you feel this way, is it possible she feels the exact same way about you? How could she? How could she? What have I taken from Oprah? When did I have Oprah's mother and father on my show? Mm -hmm. When did I have anybody come and speak about Oprah Winfrey on the Monique show? That's never happened, so how could she feel that way? Would you have done that? Had her family on? Yeah. Let me tell you how we operate. When we had the Monique show, there was a comedian on there. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to joke T.I.'s wife, Tiny. My husband walked out in the middle of his set. He said, cut. He said, brother, we don't do that here. We uplift our folks. Mm -hmm. And when my mother was on that show, do you know what I had to deal with, Shannon? What's that? I would be in the store. And I would have elderly women coming up to me. And they would say, your mama ain't sh Wow. Now, they wasn't lying, Shannon, okay? <laughs> they wasn't lying, baby. Sometimes you gotta let the truth be the goddamn truth. Sometimes you gotta just go with it, but still, it's my mother. It's your mom. And I'm in here, and I, because when she was, I'm having to defend something, and I got that often with them telling me what my mother wasn't because you did not tell me. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm gonna have your mama, I'd have said, shut that shit Grab it. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see, shut it down. Now there's a white woman. Monique also revealed that Winfrey took all the roles due to her power and money status that was first offered to her, like the part in Lee Daniels' movie, The Butler. You can't offer me. Once you say, I want you. Right. That's what it is. Okay. Okay, yes. but I don't have the money <coughs> to fund a production. Right. I don't have the connections to go to the studio and say, listen, I want to do this movie. She does. So when Lee says, hey, baby, she got the money, go get it. Get it. But someone would just say, how is that working out like that? How is that happening like that? How is it that things that was offered to Monique, you seem to be playing? Now, I, I told Oprah about that. See, everything we're saying to you right now. You ha he was having a conversation with her. Listen here. I don't play the behind the back. I don't play the I'm a share with Shannon. There's one thing I will share with you that I've not shared with anybody. Okay. But I don't play the behind the back and all of that. I say, listen, let me try to get to you first. Now, if you avoid me, okay. okay. But I tried to be respectful. I tried to call you first. When she had my family on her show, I tried to call you first. I tried to talk to you privately, but then you became the great, the great mighty Oprah Winfrey and you were too busy to talk. Well, now I'm gonna talk about it. Monique then stressed that she wouldn't put Hollywood ahead of her values, pointing to a recorded chat with Perry in which she said she wouldn't work for free. According to Monique, they came to an agreement, but she thinks that Perry and others plotted to ban her from the business when they saw that she wouldn't give up her values for their projects. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna, is he gonna make a, he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation for what transpired between you and Monique? You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I'll sit right next to him. But then you have another man that comes back when I'm offered Empire and says, Mo, they said you're difficult to work with, you're gonna be a problem. Where would they get that from? Well, somebody that's as powerful as, as Tyler. Okay, so now I'm scratched from that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to movies, I'm a difficult person to work with. 
Ain't nobody ever had a problem with me. They you never know? said, did they say, did anybody say that prior to pressure? Yes. No, not prior to pressure. Right. I've never had a problem with nobody. As long as I was saying, yes, you good. The moment you start challenging, we got a problem. What about the Parker? What about Moesha? Had anybody said anything prior about Monique's character? prior to pre her not wanting to do international press, what she wasn't contractually obligated to do. Never. Prior to that, nobody said anything. Never. And what breaks the hearts of her fans is that Monique felt let down by famous people in the business that she thought were her friends, like Oprah Winfrey. She said she loved these people and thought of them as family, but she wished they had helped her when she needed it the most. Yes. Because you're, you're, you're saying the right things, yes. but you're asking me questions that I can't answer. Right. I can't answer why Oprah Winfrey did what Oprah Winfrey did. Yes. Only Oprah Winfrey can answer for her actions. Yes. So again, stop being scared. No, I... No. I knew that would get him up, man. I knew that would pop him back in, baby. I knew that would no, get up but, a Shay Shay. But, but even, even this show, I have a producer and I give him a lot of leeway, but I've had people reach out and say, well, a family member said something and I want to come on your show and refute it. That ain't what we do here. Right. It's like, it ain't gonna happen. it's almost, you don't cross that barrier. Mm -hmm. I don't, we, don't, don't do, we don't do the family thing. You now. don't do the family thing. And, and I will say this right now on your show. I still love y'all. We still love y'all. Not to mention, Monique's willingness to name names and take on these industry heavyweights directly is similar to how she felt abandoned by her peers when she talked about pay gaps in Hollywood. Similar to what Taraji P. Henson said 10 years ago, without getting the same support and solidarity. Then you start putting the pieces together and you start saying, it's not right and I'm going to speak about it. See, when I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken, mm -hmm on those platforms. It was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer, mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you gotta keep on getting it until your turn come. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We gotta ask for it right now. Now I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister, broken, sitting on those platforms. Now when I said it, when I said it. Why didn't it get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming, and I and I don't have a problem. I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago, and I remember you saying it over a decade ago, why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. Then again, Tiffany Haddish said some hurtful things about her husband, Sidney Hicks. And of course, the comedian made sure to bring those up too. Monique didn't hold back when she talked about them, suggesting that Haddish's problems, such as DUIs and alleged misconduct, might have been avoided if she had a husband like him. There was no pulling back for the actress when she said that Haddish's words were not only rude, but also showed a lack of understanding or empathy. I remember our beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish mm -hmm. did an interview with GQ magazine. And this, in my humble opinion, is where we keep throwing each other under the bus. Mm -hmm. You're doing an interview with GQ magazine, and I I'm assuming the journalist was a white person. Mm -hmm. And the conversation turned to Monique. And she said, well, I don't do business like Monique do business, and I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers. But she don't know your husband. And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Mm. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that with no judgment, but when you speak about having a husband like mine, you open up the door and I'm saying to you, if you had one like mine, 
you may not sit in these positions that you can't explain the next day. Right. Or it's a hard way to go. So once again. Well, she doesn't even have a husband, let alone like yours. Well, well, damn it now. You said it. Monique additionally spoke about her problems with D.L. Hewley that she hadn't talked about before. According to her, she was shocked by his negative comments about her character and relationship. Moving forward, Monique talked about an event that happened on Hewley's show, where a game of Would You Rather turned into a disturbing situation. Instead of lighthearted banter, she was asked a question that made her feel uncomfortable and disrespected because it suggested worries about her husband's sexuality. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going forth, back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they say, Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, sugar. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather. No. OK? Now. Monique, you already, you should have said, I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute. We're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We're having a good time, okay, Shannon. Okay. OK? We. I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful black unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. OK. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. OK. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one. Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh? they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh? okay. Huh? That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? But here's the catch. Monique and her husband aren't trying to cause trouble, even though they've had a lot of problems and drama. They only want good things to happen in the community and for problems to be fixed instead of being ignored. You see, Monique made an interesting point when she said that she was a lot like Melissa McCarthy, a white actor with a similar history. In a way, she was trying to convey, hey, I'd have a lot more chances if I were white. And honestly, being able to hear Monique say what she thinks is great. She's speaking out for herself and other black women in the business, calling out unfair treatment and working for a more fair and welcoming Hollywood, with fans seemingly agreeing with her. That's all for today. Will Oprah be Shannon's next guest? Let us know in the comments below. For more updates, hit the bell icon.